There we go. Okay, great. Um, today we're talking about protein synthesis. Um, and I, 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 okay, something, someone just entered the waiting room. Um, but yes, protein synthesis. I Googled the name. Um, and this man, George Palade, received a Nobel Prize for uh, extensive research um, in the subject of protein synthesis, as well as um, the identification of where protein synthesis occurs in our body. Um, oh, there's already a question in the chat. It says, does it do it with, does it do with DNA? Um, does protein synthesis happen because of DNA? Is that the question? Um, yeah, D DNA is a big step in contributing to uh, protein synthesis. DNA is like the genetic information for uh, proteins, basically. Um, DNA is telling the body what kind of proteins to make. And um, it, there, there's a reason why DNA is called genetic information. It's because it's like the blueprint for everything that the body makes. And so, yes, DNA is very much involved in protein synthesis. Um, yes, Eva, go ahead. Uh <clears throat> when uh, I was taking the COVID test at home, like for the rapid antigen test, my dad said that um, the thing measures the RNA. Um, I, I, I don't know exactly how the, 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 uh, the, the COVID antigen tests work, but um, I, I, I do think they measure some form of um, probably single-stranded RNA. So yes, I wouldn't be surprised if that's true. Um, someone just entered the waiting room, so I need to take care of that quickly. Um, okay, but just know that George Palade is the guy behind it, but we're going to jump right into the actual thing, because um, knowing when George Palade was born is not that, not that, um, not that much of significance. Um, okay, so there are three major steps that we like to acknowledge in protein synthesis. Um, Let's admit Evan there. Okay, great. Um, the first step we call transcription. Um, and the second step is mRNA processing or uh, mRNA splicing. And the third step is translation. And I will go over each of these steps um, in, in, a, in a second here. Right. Um, so what, what tra transcription is the first step. And OK, someone just entered the waiting room. And I'll go over transcription in a second. But um, before I do that, I'm going to talk about the different types of RNA that are present in the body. Um, and so the, the major type of RNA that we think of is the mRNA, which is the messenger RNA. Um, and it's a template for protein synthesis, um, and it's created off of DNA. So mRNA is your uh, long, single-stranded RNA that we think of. Um, tRNA is your transfer RNA. This is the thing that will um, bring, um, that um, will actually be involved in making the, uh, the protein. And we'll talk about tRNA specifically later. Um, and rRNA, uh, this is just called ribosomal RNA. Basically, um, it, it, it binds with other proteins to form the ribosome. Um, and the ribosome is the, is the organelle in the human cell that forms proteins. Um, okay, any questions so far? I missed five minutes. Okay, uh, don't, don't worry about it, Daniel. Uh, basically, all you missed was there are three steps to protein synthesis. The first step is transcription. Second step is mRNA processing or mRNA uh, splicing. And then the third step is translation. I, I saw you come in after that, so... Okay, solid. Uh, you're muted if you just said something. Oh, what are we talking about? We were talking about protein synthesis. I probably should have told you that, but um, yeah, protein synthesis. Um, great. Uh, hold on, let me put my computer on. Do not disturb. There we go. Okay. Um, let, let, let's talk about the first and second step quickly. Um, let me see if I have the PowerPoint open on my laptop, which I do. Okay, great. Um, can, can you guys, uh, hold on, let me stop my screen share and reshare something. Um, there we go. Can you guys see the PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay, solid. Um, yeah. Yeah, sorry. I just want to work on this PowerPoint since it's a bit easier for me to see um, everything. And I have notes down here. 
uh, to help guide me through what I want to tell you guys. But um, transcription is the transfer of genetic information in the DNA to the mRNA. Um, it happens in the nucleus of the cell, which is like the command center. It's kind of the brain of the cell. Um, and this is this uh, this this right here is a pretty accurate depiction of transcription here. If I zoom in, you can see that there are actually three steps to transcription. The first step is called initiation, where this enzyme, it's called RNA polymerase, will bind to the double-stranded DNA. Um, and, and the place where it binds is called a promoter. It basically promotes um, the production of mRNA, which is why it's called a promoter. Um, and the RNA polymerase will work its way down the double-stranded DNA, and it will produce a single-stranded, uh, basically, complement to the DNA. And we call that mRNA. Um, and this little RNA polymerase enzyme here will, you know, go, go on copying forever until it reaches the stop sequence in DNA. Um, and, and, then, and then it detaches and the mRNA detaches and you have an mRNA that is, um, that is basically good to go. Um, and this first step is called initiation, where the, where the enzyme binds to the promoter. The second step is called elongation, where the mRNA is growing because the, um, because the RNA polymerase is, is, is creating it. And then the third step is called termination, where the process ends um, and the mRNA is separated from the double-stranded DNA helix. Um, and then basically we have an mRNA that is almost good to go. It's almost good to go to the ribosome and make a protein. Um, but there's one last step, um, and it's like the second step to the entire process, and it's called mRNA processing. Um, and what happens is, uh, actually, we call it mRNA splicing as well. But um, yes, Sabrina, go ahead. Okay, someone raised their hand, and now it's disappeared, so I don't know what happened there. Um, but what happens is, not all of the mRNA actually codes for a protein. Some parts of it need to be removed. Um, and the parts that are removed are called introns. Um, and you are left with mature mRNA. So this, this pre-mRNA here, this is what you get right after transcription. So you see this little red thing that's coming out of the termination step of transcription? Um, that's your pre-mRNA. And RNA splicing will turn it into mature mRNA that fully codes for a protein. Um, and the, what remains are called exons. These exons are important parts of mRNA, and these introns are the parts that don't code for anything. And so they need to be removed from the mRNA. Um, and so this mature mRNA will exit the cell nucleus. It will literally float out, um, and it will go to the ribosome. Um, and at the ribosome, we're going to be looking at, um, okay, wait, wait, hold on. I've, I've, I've overstepped myself. Last thing, um, in, 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 uh, in RNA, instead of adenine bonding to thymine, we actually have adenine bonding to uracil. Um, and these are, these are the, these are the bases for DNA. And there are, there are a bunch of different bases. Uh, in DNA, there are these um, like nucleotides. Let me let me show you if you guys can. Okay, you guys can't see my screen there, but um, if you guys were here for actually our first class, we talked about how in DNA there is adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Do you guys remember that? Um, okay, great. I'm getting nods. Solid. Um, but in that, that's only in DNA. In RNA, you have adenine. Um, and uracil. Instead of adenine bonding to thymine, it's adenine bonding to uracil. So remember that in RNA, you have uracil instead of uh, thymine. Um, and then guanine and cytosine are, are the same, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but this is specifically in RNA. DNA is different. Um, can you guys name one more difference between DNA and RNA? I know you guys can. Okay, I don't, no one can name I don't, a difference. I don't know a difference. 
Okay. Um, nobody, <laughs> nobody can name a difference between DNA and RNA apart from uracil. I still don't get what RNA is. Oh, oh boy. Okay. okay. Yes, me too. So, um, it's confusing. Yeah, it's so confusing. <laughs> there are different types of RNA. When 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 I say RNA, I'm mostly referring to the uh, the messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is um single stranded DNA, and it is built off of the genetic DNA information. Okay, I I, I might have overstepped myself. I might have um assumed that you guys knew a little bit more about um, DNA and RNA than you guys might have. Sorry, you guys are still young. Um, but in, in protein synthesis, in this entire process, um, there are three different kinds of RNA. But the one we're focusing on right now is messenger RNA or mRNA. Um, and this is a single-stranded RNA. If you guys remember that DNA is double-stranded, um, it, that's one of the major differences between mRNA and, um, and, and DNA. There's a question in the chat that says, what does RNA stand for? I also keep forgetting what DNA stands for. DNA stands for de uh, deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Yes, Eva. Also, uh, what does double-stranded mean? Okay. Um, double-stranded means that uh, there is this kind of, um, there, 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 DNA looks like a ladder if you un unravel it. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So RNA is only one side of that ladder. Notice that this red RNA only has like one side of the ladder. Let me, um, hold on. Let me stop my screen share and uh, see if I can find a good Google picture of that. Then, um, why, why is it double stranded if it only has one side of the ladder? Why, why is, sorry, why is, why is what? Like, uh, why is the RNA double-stranded if it only has one side of the ladder? Okay, um, RNA is single-stranded, watch out. Um, RNA okay. is single-strand and DNA is um, double-strand. If you look here, this is a really good Google image, actually. The, what, what is on the left here, this is your DNA. Notice how there is the double helix structure. Um, this is the Watson and Crick DNA. Um, and it looks like a ladder that's been twisted. If you look at the RNA on the right here, notice how it's only one strand. It it doesn't look um, like there's another strand, right? Wouldn't the like stuff just fall out? Um, there are that, that that that's a really interesting question. But there are actually um intermolecular forces, like very small, um kind of like ways for the different kinds of things to hold on to each other. Um, and that's that's something you guys will oh oh. I clicked on the wrong thing. Hold also, on um, what like, uh, like uh, why would only the, like for the DNA? Why would only the red stuff go with the yellow and the green stuff go with the blue? Okay. Um. Okay. So, okay. Let, let, let me answer why the the little things don't fall off first. Um. And then I'll and then I'll hit that question. But it but it's just because they're like very small forces at the like molecular level, like um, that are holding the things together. I mean, imagine how how much of how big of an issue it would be if your RNA just started like falling apart in your body. Um, yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't be a functioning human being anymore if well, you know, came off. Well, you know, pe some people think of cells as very small, but single cell organisms have like have like big cells and the egg is basically just one cell and it's at the middle, which is the yolk. Um, wait, can, can, can you repeat that, Helen? Sorry, I didn't follow that initially. Well, what most people think typically is that a cell is something very, very small for a multi-celled creature, but a single-celled organ Ism can have a large cell, like um, an egg, for example, because because the large cell is at the middle, which is the yolk. Uh, a, an an egg is um. Are 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 you saying that an egg has multiple 
has has a single cell. I, I'm I'm not I'm not following. Yes, an egg has a single cell. Yeah, yes. In in the human body, eggs are um a single cell. The female reproductive egg is a single celled um gamete. That is yes, that is correct. Um, but um back back to uh back to why this uh the the blue only bonds to um. The, uh, only bonds to the green or, or, or why cytosine only bonds with guanine. Um, it's because of, again, intermolecular forces and also something called purines versus pyrimidines. Um, if, you, if you go look at purines versus pyrimidines, um, you'll notice that your, your purines are these guys, adenine and guanine. And your pyrimidines are okay. That is not that is not a good picture at all. I'm sorry, um, but your purines are these double rings. You can see that you know there's one ring here and there's two rings here, um, and then there's your pyrimidines are your single rings, um, and so it's it's very relevant to why uh, adenine only bonds to thymine. It's because these pyrimidines and purines have to be matching. Um, does, does that make sense, Eva? Uh-huh. Okay, great. Solid. Also, uh, uh, um, is there like a uh, certain information in those like sticks of color? Oh, uh, is there certain information in the color? Like, no, no, like uh, this. I, I just said that because I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, oh. This. Is there certain information thing? in like thymine? Like all of them. Okay. Um. That 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 that's actually a really good question. Um. And the really interesting part is, like, if you take thymine or cytosine individually, like, if I give you a thymine, like, just out of nowhere, that doesn't really mean anything. There's no information stored in thymine necessarily. But if we take, like, three three of three of the bases, like thymine, cytosine, adenine. If I say TCA, like put together, that will mean something. DNA is coded in three bases and we call those codons. Um, and I'll talk about codons in a second. Yes, Eva. Uh, also, uh, um, I think I have a lot of questions. Uh, yeah, no, that's fine, go ahead. Uh, is there like, uh, does, the, like does the pattern like mean something? Yes, the pad, uh, the 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 order of um, the 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 order of the bases does mean something. Um, that's that's your genetic information. The order of the bases determines what the DNA is saying. Um, if it's in some random order, well then um, the information is kind of random. But if the bases then are, you look right. hmm? then you'll look right. I have it. Yes, you will. will be you won't be a functioning human being. But um, yes, these have to be in a specific order for your body to produce proteins and give good genetic information. Is that it? Great, solid. Let me go back to the PowerPoint here. Um, stop my screen share. Reshare my PowerPoint. Great. Um, right. So we just finished talking about um, RNA splicing. Let's talk about translation, which is the last step in protein synthesis. Um, and notice here, Eva, how, um, actually I, I, I won't talk about that, but remember how Eva asked if DNA was random um, and if each of those individual bases mean anything? Each individual base doesn't mean anything, but if you take three bases, and you put them next to each other, that is important. Um, we call those three bases a codon. Each three bases, uh, each three bases are called a codon. Um, and that's a really important term that you'll see over and over again as you, as you guys go into high school. Um, right, so after, uh, after RNA splicing, after the RNA is um, processed and everything, the mRNA travels to a ribosome. Um, and a ribosome is basically a, a, a protein factory in your body. It, it spends its entire life making proteins for you. Um, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Does anyone have any questions on ribosomes?
Okay, great, solid. Um, I was I have one question, and the yes, thing that uh, the, the thing that makes protein for you like all the time, uh, like uh, it does it like does it ever get tired? Um. I mean, it, eventually it will wear out and it will um it will break apart especially if the cell is getting old the ribosomes will also die with the cell so yes it, it can get old it doesn't it's not like it's not like infinite or anything but like, not um, but like uh like if you get older and then it dies out like wears out uh how will it get more, more like more protein um if, if your ribosomes are dying, how do you get more proteins? Yeah. Uh, you, 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 you don't really get proteins. You start dying if your ribosomes are dying. Um, oh, so you die? Yeah, I mean, if your ribosomes aren't making proteins anymore, you'd either have to take some kind of medicine or, um, or your body would get really weak. I mean, proteins are not only like the basis for muscles, but proteins are kind of everywhere in the body. They're in the blood. Uh, they're, they're in the brain. You need proteins for basically everything. Um, uh -huh. also one more question. Uh, if you lived in the middle ages and your, and your ribosomes were dying, uh, what would you do? Oh, if you lived in the middle ages and you didn't have good medicine and your ribosomes were dying. Hmm. Um, uh, I, I don't really know. I'm, I'm not a middle-aged doctor. I would assume that, you know, you would die. Uh, your ribosomes are very important to your body. And if your ribosomes are dying, then I don't expect you to live very long. Um, I'm sorry. I think Wait. you have to die. I have more, uh, more question. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, don't worry about it. Go ahead. Uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. If you're immortal, but immortal. like... Whoa. If okay, you're okay. if you're immortal uh and uh your ribosomes were dying, like you wouldn't be able to die, but what will happen? If you were like, immortal but your ribosomes were dying. I don't think anyone has been immortal before. <laughs> yeah. And um, like uh one of the reasons why um people die of old age um people die of age is because your chromosomes actually begin wearing out like the tips of your chromosomes um they start becoming frayed um and that's one of the reasons why we die of old age um and that has nothing to do with ribosomes so if your chromosomes are wearing out and you die of old age um well well then well, then your ribosomes wouldn't have much of an issue. But if you are immortal only to old age, like you can still get sick, um, well, then your ribosomes dying would probably kill you. Um, if you're immortal to everything, then I don't know, because immortality is not something that humans can grasp very well. Um, and I, when, when you were talking about that, I was thinking about Zeus. <laughs> oh, well, yes. Well, Zeus, Zeus is something of mythology. So that is, that is very different. That is something that us humans can actually comprehend. Um, sorry if I just ask somebody to unmute. I just accidentally clicked the wrong button on my side. Um, but yeah. All right, anyways. Um, as the mRNA travels to a ribosome, the ribosome legitimately like, it, it like sticks itself onto the mRNA um, and it begins to produce the protein. Um, and I'm going to talk about how now. Um, and so the ribosome, it reads the mRNA. It, like it, it, it doesn't have eyes, but it will read the mRNA codon by codon. So notice how, um, um, do you guys remember what a codon is, right? I just talked about codons. It's like this, this yellow thingy. Thing. Yes, yes, it's. Um, it's three of these bases. So this is one codon. Yeah, do you see this CUA here? Uh-huh. Let me, let me, let me, let me annotate this. Let me see how good I am at this. Yes, yeah, CUA here. Any That's one codon. For every codon? Uh, sorry, what was the question? So is it three bases for every codon? Yes, yes. This AAG, this is a codon. AAA, that's a codon apparently. Um. Are we ever gonna do the booklet? Yes, we will do the booklet, but um, I kind of have to go over this because 
uh, if, if you guys don't know this, then the booklet is going to be impossible because it's actually pretty advanced. Um, clear all drawings, solid. Anyways, um, yeah, so codons are three uh, base nucleotides. Three, remember three, okay? If someone says four, I'm kicking them from the meeting. Um, I, I won't actually do that. Um, what happens is the ribosome, it reads the mRNA by codons. And for every codon, it will bring in one tRNA. Um, and this is one tRNA here. That, that, that bad boy right there. So as the ribosome is reading this, um, this, this mRNA strand here, it will do it by codons. And for every one codon or three bases, it will bring in one tRNA. Yes. Um, yes, Eva. Like how will it read without eyes? I mean, like uh, computers don't have eyes and they can and read stuff because I feel have coded them to understand stuff. But uh, human bodies, no one has coded them. Uh, I'm not Christian, so I don't think God has coded them or blah, blah. So how do they read the stuff? How does the ribosome read it? Yeah. Um, well, well it, 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 it actually kind of does this process of like guess and check where it will actually bring in these tRNAs and whichever one fits, like whichever one has the matching codon, um, it, 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 it's like, oh, okay, I got you now. And it kicks all the other uh, tRNAs out, but um, it will, it will, uh, hold on, let me, let me, let me circle it. But it will, it will try a bunch of these guys. And based on whether or not this codon, AAG, matches up with the mRNA, it will, um, it will allow that tRNA to stay or leave. So, so that's how it does it. Oh, look, um, AAG, uh, oops. I pressed the wrong button. I pressed the request remote control. Uh, AAG is over here, so it will not kick this guy out. Uh, yes, yes, yes. AAG, this AAG will actually bond to the next three uh, on the mRNA, which is UUC. And that's that's the correct bonding order. Um, adenine bonds to uracil and guanine bonds to cytosine, AU. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so so, so that's, how, that's how the ribosome recognizes it. Um, so what happens is the ribosome, it, 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 I keep on saying reading, but we've just gone over that. It doesn't actually do much reading, but um, it will bring in the tRNA. And this guy, this is the amino acid. The tRNA is attached to the amino acid. Um, this is your tRNA. The thing I just circled in pink is your amino acid. And these two things are attached. Um, and you guys can notice how as the tRNA, this yellow guy is coming in, the amino acids, they grow. Do you guys see that? Great, solid. Um, and this is eventually your protein, this entire growing chain. As soon as the ribosome is done creating, um, cre is done reading the mRNA, this entire thing will become your, uh, your protein. Let me, let me like, clear all um... the things. Is it like in the in the body like uh those are really, really tiny so I'm so I'm pretty sure no one really knows but are those things like that are they like balls and then they and then they turn into something like a liquid um, or something or are they like they're like solid solid like solid two D stuff? Are you talking about proteins? Like this pinkish stuff. Oh, amino acids. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. um, let, let, me, let me show you uh, a relatively accurate representation of a, of a protein quickly. Um, and proteins are very 3D things. So let me, hold on. Let me see if I can find a good protein diagram. Okay, these are all, one second. I'm so sorry, give me a second here. Um, uh, ah, here, this is, this is a good photo. tRNA stands for transfer. RNA, transfer RNA. Um, this is a photo of a, a protein that is basically done. And you can notice how this is very like complex and 3D, right? This doesn't look flat. Does it look flat to you? No. Exactly. No. It um, looks like a, yes. It looks like a brain. It, it does look like a brain. It also looks like one of those like Chuck E. Cheese, like tube mazes, you know? Um, and so yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty complicated. 
Um, and it's like folded in on itself. And so it's very 3D. It's not flat at all. And like so why the, um, it's, look, since it's like all squiggly squirrely, mm -hmm. it's going to take a long time for the protein to go from this spot to that spot. So uh, like, um, so why is, the, why is it like be all squiggly squaggly if it's going to like take longer? Um, the, in, in the human body, structure of everything is very, very, very important. Um, structure is incredibly important. If, if my hands were not structured the way they were, I couldn't type. Um, and the same thing goes for proteins. The proteins have to be structured in a specific way so that the human body can use them. If the protein is poorly folded, if it's folded the wrong way, or if it is simply just structured the wrong way, the human body can't use it. It has to destroy the protein. Oh, um, yeah. so it's like, it has to be squiggly, squaggly, or else. Yes, exactly. If it's not squiggly, squaggly, we have an issue. Um, oh. Yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you you would look kind of weird if, if it wasn't squiggly, squaggly. Um, yeah, have, but these amino have. acids are attached to the growing protein chain. Um, and this entire protein chain grows longer and longer until you get a protein. Um and that right there is legitimately just protein synthesis. Okay, any any questions before we go to the book it? Um, okay, this is this was a really difficult topic. I feel like you guys um, I, I feel like you guys would be uh, will be pretty pretty good at everything else if you guys can understand this. Um, let me let me check the let me check the chat. How many types of RNAs are there? There are three types of RNA. Um, what does tRNA stand for? tRNA um, stands for uh, transfer RNA. Transfer RNA is this guy. Transfer RNA is the guy that brings in that brings in the amino acids. This green straight line right here is your messenger RNA. Um, hopefully that answers your question. Yes, Eva, I think you had a question as well. Uh, does does that thing like stay there in, the, in your body like like the keys on your keyboard like stay there or do they like move around with the yellow stuff? Well, no, no, not like that. Uh, like, uh, like move around to where the more like more of the yellow stuff is. Um, what these tRNAs? Like, does the does the green thing oh. here? like move around your body or just like stay there? So what actually happens is after the mRNA is used to make the protein, after the ribosome is like, okay, I've made the protein, I'm gone, bye-bye. Um, the mRNA actually gets destroyed. These, okay. these individual bases can actually be reused to make more mRNA. Um, and so that's, that's one of the really cool things. It's like recycling. You recycle the mRNA. You know, we're, we're, we're good for the environment here. And it, the recycling is good for the human body. Um, yeah. So it's recycled. Is that it? Yeah, it is cool. Like, uh, just like, where does the, like, the stuff that you don't need, like, go? Do you, like, like, do you, like, come in one and go out the other? Um. Sorry, what 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 are you talking about? Like the stuff that's not used, like the stuff that's it, not used. Does it like uh go and go on one end and go with the other like your food does? Oh, the 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 tRNA. Yeah, like no, like the like the not used part of the green RNA, or not green RNA, the messenger RNA. Yeah. Um. Well, well, well. Actually, the entire thing is used at this point. Oh. Um. The, the, the ribosome reads the entire mRNA. Um, and after the entire thing has been read, it goes, okay, I don't need you anymore. You know, bye-bye. Um, and it like poofs off into the distance and the mRNA is recycled. So the whole thing is read. Yeah, remember the parts that are not important, the parts that like are irrelevant are removed during RNA splicing. Um, okay. Anyone else? Any more questions? I don't think so. Uh, someone wrote, "What is this in the chat?" Um, what do you mean? What? 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 What is what? Like, right. like, 
like like the entire topic is protein synthesis. I, I feel like this topic might be a bit hard for you guys. I, should, I, I need to pick something a little bit easier. Don't you guys think? Yeah, this was this was a pretty uh, pretty rigorous topic. Okay, well, let me stop my screen share. We're running out of time, so you guys are going to have to leave and rejoin. But um, yeah, we're just going to play the book it now, okay? All right. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys in a sec. I'm going to end the meeting.